So, random numbers are cool. But one of the biggest problems with random numbers and random number generators is that they are too random. They can lead to jagged shapes or repeating numbers or just really weird shapes. And when you're dealing with something like, for say, terrain, you don't want that. But you still want to keep a random aspect and you don't want to handcraft every single element. And Perlin noise can solve this problem. So Perlin noise is basically something like this, where you have this little texture that smooths between random numbers, giving you a nice organic gradient-like effect. And in this video, I'll be showing you how to take this theory and bring it into Roblox Studio to get something looking like this. So if you're interested in that or just want to learn some new Roblox API, or just play around with this really cool feature, then watch this video. And if you like it, make sure to like and subscribe. But without further ado, let's get into the video. So what is Perlin noise? Perlin noise is a type of noise generation that generates random numbers that are close to each other when they're close by distance. So let me do a quick little visual demonstration. Let me create this part. We're going to change the size to 444. There we go. So here we have our part. Usually, if I were to randomly resize this part, you would get something where part size like this. And then if you do another random iteration, it would size like this and so on and so forth. It just look really, really stupid. But with Perlin noise, you can generate random values that are closer. So instead of something like this, it'd be more like a gradient. So if I duplicate this again, it would be something like this, and then maybe it would do another one of those, and then go back up again. So you get the idea. Just something that allows you to make like a nice little slope instead of jagged changes. And this is really good for stuff like terrain generation. So in my base plate, I'm going to delete the base plate because it's looking kind of bland. And we're gonna make our own randomly generated base plate looking thing. So first things first, make a script in server script service. Here I am, I'm gonna zoom in first variable we're going to define is our range. So this is going to be a constant, that's why it's in all caps, and this is going to be your values for the range in studs where our parts will be spawning. So I'm just going to say 10 studs. And then I'm going to have another value, rows, which is going to be like the amount of rows that we need. And then calls, which is the amount of columns. And these are all just constants. You can change them if you want. They're just to make my script look a little bit better and easier to change. And so the rows and columns is basically just you have X for rows, Y for columns, and it'll be the range in which we're generating our Perlin noise parts. So now we need to define a function called create part. We'll take an X value, a Y value, and an alpha value. And this function will be responsible for displaying our parts that we will generate and we'll give it Perlin noise parameters. So we're going to say local part equals instance.new part. We're going to set our part dot size to vector 3new 111. This just makes it easy so it's nice in the small part. And we'll set the part dot position equal to a vector 3.new. So we want to set our part position. Now, it may be a little misleading because of these function parameters, but when we want to set our part position, we're going to deal with 3D space, not 2D space. So this Y will actually be your Z value. So let's just put that in for now. So X, 0, Y. So we have our X and our Z values because you'll notice in Roblox, if you look in the top right, you can see the Z 
goes across, the x goes across, and the y is up and down. So we want to change the up and down. And this alpha value will be the Perlin noise return value that we get from our function. So we can set our y value to our part to the alpha times the range. So the alpha will be a value from negative 1 to 1, and we'll multiply by our range to get a more like a scaled up value. So now we can go and create a loop. We're going to say for x, or we're going to start with for y equals 1, comma, calls, do. And we're going to say for x equals 1, comma, rows, do. And this may look a little counterintuitive since we're starting with y and then we're going to x, but this is basically just how you do it. It's the way you iterate through a 2D space. And I guess you could switch it, but this is just the way I've always seen it done and this is the way that works best for the future. So now we can define our noise. So in Roblox, Perlin noise is built in using a function math.noise. And this function takes in three parameters, an x, y, and z. Since we're dealing with the basics, we're going only going to use x and y because z is used for other, like, tr like cave generation, for example. We're not going to need that. So you may, be, you may want to just say x, y, 0, but that would not work because if all of these values are integers, math.noise will return 0. So you have to return a fractional value. And the easiest way to do that is by saying x divided by rows and then y divided by calls. So we get a fractional value. So if we're at our middle of our iteration, so let's say x is 50, we'll get 0 0.5 because 50 divided by 100 would be 0 0.5. And our math.noise will return a random alpha value. That's why our parameter up here is named alpha. So then we can say create part with our x, our y, and our noise value. So this should work fine. Let's try it. Oh, well, I actually forgot to set the part.parent to the workspace. That's my bad. Here we go again. We also need to set part.anchored equal to true. So here you go. Here is your Perlin noise. So you'll notice that it's very, very smooth, and each part is very close to each other in terms of their y values, which leads to this really nice terrain. And one interesting characteristic about Perlin noise is if I were to run this again, I get the same exact values for all of the parts. So they're in the same exact format. So the way we'd go about adding some randomness to our noise, instead of it being a constant same thing every single time, is by adding an offset. So I'm going to go to the top of my script to find an offset x, which will be equal to, let's say, 10, and an offset y, which will be equal to 10 as well. So these values will be responsible for offsetting our noise values. So if we go down to math.noise, we can use the same expression here, x divided by rows, but we can add our offset. So what this will do is basically just shift the like, sample values that we're getting from math.noise to our offset values. And we can do the same for the columns with the offset y. And you'll notice if I run this, it's kind of hard to tell, but we get a slightly different noise generation. And this isn't completely random yet, but the, there's a very easy way to do that, and that's by randomizing the offset. So I can just say offset x equals math.random from negative 100 to 100, and I can copy this to offset y. So if I were to run this, you can see we have a completely random generation. I know these are looking very similar, but they are a little different, and that's exactly what we want. Now there's a chance that they'll be exactly the same, but it just depends on your math or random values. You can change these to whatever you want. 
So that's about it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. This is a really nice and simple video on a arguably pretty complex topic, noise generation, but this is a really cool thing that's used for terrain generation and for many other things, regardless of Roblox. It's used everywhere in game development, and it's really, really cool. So if you enjoyed the video, make sure to like and subscribe, and I hope you have a nice day, and goodbye. Thank you.